going to teach you how I create my, uh, my super simple grain spawn jars. Now, how I used to create grain spawn jars is I used to soak my, uh, my rye berries, which is what I use. Hold on, let me give you a shot of some rye berries. These are the rye berries. These are what I use in my grain jars. And I used to soak these things overnight. Then I used to give them like a 20 minute simmer. Then I used to let them dry. Then I used to put them into the jars over there and uh, begin the process. But I did some experimenting and I've learned an, an even lazier method, a method where that doesn't require almost any of those steps. Now I've actually tested my method right over here on one of our, uh, on one of our Portabella grain jars. This is one I actually did on my own. And it is, it seems to work. So let me see if I can remember the steps that I used to do. I used to soak the grains overnight then I used to simmer them in a pot for anywhere from like 20 to 30 minutes right until about the, the uh, rye berries would start to start to burst just a little bit. Uh, then from there I would lay them all out on like a drying sheet on a towel or something like that and let them dry for a few hours. Then when they were dry to the touch I would take the grain, I would put it back into the jars, then I would put them in the pressure cooker. Then I would put them in the pressure cooker for 90 minutes at 15 psi. And at that point, I would have jars of grain that was ready to use, which was fine and it always worked out just fine for me in the past, but I found an even easier method. I've actually tested the method out. I've used the method a few times now. I've got a couple different uh, grain jars down here that I've done this way, both uh, which are showing some growth. I don't know if you can see that on the bottom. Okay, now the amount of grain that you wanna put in your jar I could give you an exact specific amount of cups and all that sort of stuff. But to be honest with you, yet another thing that the mushroom has taught me is to just kind of, just kind of go with your gut, just kind of go with your eye. And these days I just tend to eyeball it. But if I was to guess, I would say that I like to fill it about maybe a third of the way full. Is that about a third of the way? Maybe a third to about a half of the way full. Now that we've got one grain jar, we can just kind of fill up right to about where that goes. There we are. Maybe a little bit more in each. These grains are eh, usually at least going to, maybe not quite double, but I assume that with about this much grain, by the time it absorbs all the water in here, it should be right up to about, right up to about there or so. I'm using a big jug of RODI water for this just because I create about five gallons a week because um, I use it for my reef tank and I use it for watering plants and I just have it on hand, but you can use tap water for this. It doesn't really matter, but let me show you my trick to how much water to actually put in here. I'd like to tell you an exact amount of milliliters again, but this has become one of those things that you just sort of learn to do and let me show you what I do. I fill it until the water goes right above the grain, just above it. Not too much, not too little. Can you see how the water is coming right up to the top there? Hold on. Give it a little bit of a shake just to kind of work some of the water into all the cracks and crevices. Just until everything is submerged. So I've got my two jars. I might as well take this opportunity to show off my uh, custom 3D printed grain jar lids. Now this is kind of like the complicated part of the process. Obviously you'd have to either buy one of my lids from my Etsy shop or you'd have to 3D print um, your own custom lid. But you can also just you know take a regular uh, jar lid and you can drill two holes in it and this is that little gray dot right there that is what's called a uh, injection port so basically that's where we can stick a needle into that's full of a liquid culture that's how we can transfer contents into these jars after they've been pressure cooked and then this right here it has a little cap on it that will remove after we pressure cook it but this is um, basically like a little filter and it kind of acts uh, as a chimney It'll let all of the CO2 that builds up in, this, uh, in these jars after we've inoculated them with our mycelium or our liquid culture. And uh, it'll allow all that CO2 to escape out of here. And then, but it won't let any of the nasty little contaminants that could get in and ruin our mushroom grow uh, down into the jars. I guess that'll be a good transition into uh, tightening these things. 
So I'll show you that. What I like to do is I like to tighten it just to where it starts to feel tight. And then I give it like a quarter turn unscrew, just like that. And I like to kind of give it a little look underneath just to make sure that the seal isn't doing anything weird. It didn't like fold in on itself or anything like that. But anyways, now we've got our jar lids screwed on tightly. It's time to put these things in the pressure cooker. I've got just a little bit of water in the bottom there. A lot of people like to say, don't put your jars directly into the, uh, the water, but I've found that it doesn't really make any sort of a difference. Let's turn it on, get it cranked up to as high as it can go. Put the lid on, also say goodbye to that because we're not gonna be seeing the inside of that for a little while. We just took those you know, regular dry rye berries, we filled them in the jars, we you know, topped it off with a little bit of water and the pressure cooker is gonna do the job of all of the simmering and the drying and everything that, we would, that I've previously done. Uh, the pressure cooker I've learned is going to, it's gonna take care of all of that for us. Maybe I can take you on a journey. I've got some plants waiting in the shower that I was watering this morning. And we can possibly put those back. Uh-oh. It looks like my pressure cooker might have blown the fuse. And there it is. But anyways, back in business. We've got that cranked up to as high as it'll go. And again, we're just waiting for that. Um, we're waiting for this little button right here to pop out. We're not gonna wait for the pressure cooker to come up to steam and all that sort of stuff. Again, once it's actually ready, once it's actually built its pressure up to 15, I keep not, I swear I've pressure cooked in here before and it doesn't, it doesn't keep killing my, uh, my switches. I guess there's nothing else I can turn off. We're gonna have to move over to the kitchen for the rest of this. Oh, did I mention that I sold another set of my mushroom magnetic filter covers? Going out today, in fact. For once that's actually finished pressure cooking, we're gonna give it what's called a hot shake. So you're gonna let the pressure cooker come back down to temperature, you're gonna let it cool off, you're gonna do everything safe. You never wanna open a pressure cooker when it's got some pressure in it still. So let everything cool down. But when the water's still hot in there, once it's cooled down for you know just a few hours or so, crack the lid, pull that jar out, give it a good shake. I'm sure I'll be back to, to show you it in person when it's ready. You can always tell when the pressure cooker's ready because of the rattling. A little over 15 PSI, but crank that down to about 1200, 90 minutes. And that's all you gotta do besides wait. You say hey to my boy Joe. Give him a wave, Joe. Give him a dance -a -roo. He'll perform all day, folks. He'll perform all day. The pressure cooker's cooking. And it'll be ready in 90 minutes. Okay. And there we go. But like I said before, at this point, we wanna do what's called a hot shake. So we got to skip all the other steps. We got to skip the soaking. We got to skip the simmering. We got to skip the drying. We got to skip all those ske steps. The one step we can't skip is the hot shake. And again, basically what this is doing is just any little extra moisture in there. It's just helping sort of distribute it among the grains. And actually, oh yeah, don't forget to tighten your lid too. But now everything in this jar is sterilized. Everything's ready for our mushroom inoculation. The grains are probably still a little bit too hot to be doing the inoculation right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually set these two jars aside for the time being. And at some point in the near future, we'll take those grain jars to the next level by inoculating them with baby little mushrooms and starting, starting a new grow. So that is the, that's the lazy boy. That's the, the quick and dirty and easiest way of, of creating a sterilized grain jar. 